Jerry from Showtime Audio. Just wanted to show you our latest project, this beautiful 1972 Chevelle. So we're doing a audio upgrade. So the client had a bunch of stuff that was done not, not the greatest way in the world. Some of the speakers were being held on by one screw. Some of the speakers were mounted but covered by cardboard and tape. The wiring is just ran all kinds of ways. Nothing is uh, taped or properly secured. So we're just gonna walk you through and show you uh, how we do it and what's the, the best way to work on these classic vehicles. Right, so this is the part that's uh, very frustrating. And a lot of times it's, it's either, you know, hot rod shops or mechanics or anybody that's not necessarily a car audio guy. And so they do things to the cars to make them sound, quote unquote, sound better but they're actually working against themselves. So we wanted to show you. So we took the rear deck off on this uh, Chevelle and the speakers were actually bolted to the sheet metal. But the problem with that is they had absolutely no spacer. So you're supposed to put in a spacer when you bottom mount it because otherwise, as you can see here, the speaker's compressed. Well, the speaker can't move if it's pinned. So if it's pinned down, the speaker can't move to make sound. The tweeter will still play, but the mid the mid bass driver or the mid range you won't play because and that's the majority of the speaker. So you'll wonder why the car sounds so horrible. So on top of that, if that isn't bad enough, they put this is the the holes for the speaker. So somehow they thought that putting cardboard and then taping the cardboard and then putting this on top would sound fantastic. That's not right so even if the tweeter did play you're not going to hear it first of all through this piece of cardboard and second of all this is a speak of a piece of uh, thicker carpet this is more of a uh, there's some carpets that are kind of transparent so a sound will go through them this is not really one of them so even if they did everything right even if they spaced it even if they didn't have this piece of cardboard taped um, and the speaker was here not much sound is going to make it through this uh, material. So the ideal thing is to cut the deck and mount the speaker. Now I know what you're going to say, sometimes you don't want to see the speakers. Then if that's the case, what you want to do is you make a new rear deck, cut out the opening, and then upholster the rear deck in either grill cloth or a material that's more that allows the sound to go through. So again, just be careful who you take your car to for, for audio upgrades. Be sure that they're car audio people, right? And that understand the type of vehicle that they're working on, right? Because every car has a different set of rules. We call it a language, right? So the car, every car has a different language and you have to learn the language of the vehicle, right? So what to do, what not to do, what works, what doesn't. So another thing that we like to do a lot is use these uh, pre-made kick panels. They're spe vehicle specific. Obviously they're made to match the texture, color, everything of the vehicle. If the car has venting, then it has the, the provision for the knob. Uh, but one of the thing is, these things are pretty flimsy. As you can see, this is the only reinforcement, these two little pieces of plastic. But other than that, it's a pretty thin piece of plastic. So what we like to do, is and you can't obviously feel this but it, it has some weight to it now so we add deadener on the back of it and around the driver to basically deaden the plastic and make it more solid in order to get a little bit more um, mid-base and mid-range out of it so this is a simple little trick but it makes a huge difference so again another one of those little tricks that uh, more uh, car audio place would be more prone to do. So as you can see, look at the thickness of the original panel and now look at the thickness of our new panel, right? So it's still the same, obviously, ABS composite plastic, but now there's a butyl, an aluminum, and then a closed cell foam. So the other thing that that does is it also creates another barrier or gasket between the sheet metal and the plastic. So there's less chance of this panel vibrating or resonating when the when the mid-base driver plays so again just another benefit of deadening the panel itself so as you can see the uh, the kick panels are in um, they're deadened they're wired the you know all the speakers are mounted he's got all his wires ran for the radio so the cage is in he actually painted the cage black just so it's normally silver but just so that it fits a, a little better in the dash itself and then he's got the wires already ran 
for power, ground, and ignition because obviously there's none here, so we have to make our own. And then if you look back here, so I just wanted to show you the level of detail, right? So we trimmed the package tray and mount top loaded the six by nine so that you can get the most possible sound out of the system. And then this is our wiring. So if you, if you see, it looks like the wiring out of a brand new car, right? But we follow the lines of the car. He has it taped in place so it doesn't move. And then this way, it's just super clean and neat. And I'll show you the amplifier in the trunk. There's the amplifier. So there's a custom composite board made. And then as you can see, all the wiring is super finished and uh, dressed. And now it runs out the side there, super clean. This is gonna be our subwoofer wire and it's just ready to go. If you want to have an idea, this is the disaster that was in there. So just a bunch of hodgepodge mismatched parts and now it's done at a very high level. So if anybody goes in there, they're not gonna see this ball of wires. They're actually.